Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here, and this is going to be week number 6 of the UPBA, and we're up against Wolf and his Trotsu Gyarados, if I'm not mistaken. I've really never tried to say that out loud, but we're going to go with that and hope that it's okay. Now, this is a really, really scary matchup, right? Because look, the truth is, this is one of the weirdest builds that I've put together because it is a little bit boring and a little bit straightforward, but I have seen this person 6-0 somebody just because it's impossible to break the combination of Porygon 2 and Slowbro, so I'm really going to try to lean into that and try to wear those down as quickly as possible because like I said I've seen this man 6-0 a team because that double teleport is able to get him into his big threats and his big threats are big threats against my team in particular but on top of that I've also seen him not be able to break a type null and kind of lose on time because of it he's a person that likes to take a ton of time in between his turns and I'm gonna honestly try to take advantage of that because I think I can honestly confuse him enough that I can kind of find my way through this match and kind of do what I need to do here and like I said this isn't gonna be the most kind of exciting build in the world but i feel like i really needed a win i really needed to get some of the confidence back and try to push forward with this team in a matchup that i really don't think works well for me right so we're gonna do what we can i honestly don't even think i need to go through the team that much i'm just gonna get right into it but uh we, we'll go through it as we go along so i do lead off with a mill tank and i have been doing that quite a bit here but you'll also notice that this is the first match of the season that I haven't brought the sand slash and I feel and I feel kind of naked without the sand slash but uh, we're gonna try to do some things and it maybe would have been a pretty solid pick here with super fang and being able to super fang the big threats but I felt like I had a strong six to kind of bring here but he does lead off with the torque and I do believe I am max special defense and thick fat so i'm pretty confident that i can kind of stand up to this thing and obviously body press is a thing that i have to be concerned about but i really do expect turn one rocks uh and i do expect that if we just trade rocks you'll be able to spin them away th on the following turn so i really want to take advantage of of the turns while i have them but i miss as he goes for the rocks right and, and to be honest i don't even remember whether or not he, he goes for turn one rocks i just it just felt right even just watching this back in the moment right anyway I don't know what to really to do here i can kind of put on some pressure because torkoal's hp isn't the best but uh i'm going through some options i'm kind of just trying to think this through here i think here i did expect i did hard read a body press to be coming in especially now that he kind of felt entitled to uh and there are a couple things go going on here right um I'm, I'm going into my boots mon which helps i'm going into my defog mon and i'm going into my my body pressure disc and i'm going into a max pressure defense token disc, right so so i kind of felt reasonably safe here i felt um okay to take on this oracle and kind of deal damage to, to this oracle because um i'm going to be able to kind of try to wear this thing down if if and if nothing else i kind of expected this to be a physically defensive uh torkoal to try to stand up to my kiram and take a hit hit back with a lava plume maybe try to try to fish for a burn hit back with a body press maybe whatever the case may be right regardless i felt safe kind of kind of being in here um on the physical side it should have body press and on the special side I'm, and special defense i'm especially defensive to take this thing on if i get some if i get a flinch or two here and there um then we can start to get some things going but the bigger thing is to defog away set up the rest of the team and just try to make certain things happen here right but i go for the defog and it turns out that it's a jackpack right so that tells me a couple things right unless he expected this exact scenario where i defog away and he, and he gets to to free switch that tells me that this thing has has overheat on its set right and he's he was planning to get some free hits off with an overheat be able to switch out and and get some momentum on me get the drop on me momentum wise right and really catch me off guard which i thought was really smart i thought it was really cool and obviously he didn't expect to kind of uh be be caught in the, in this way but it puts me in a really interesting position vis-a-vis -vis the rest of his team it gives me a ton of information and it starts to make me think certain thoughts right in particular this moment is where I try to start to put two and two together and start to think oh if, if he's willing to to be overheat on that maybe he's trying to go like full in with a solar power Charizard it could be specs right that that's my that's where I head first goes right and uh it can it cannot be cure him. maybe it would want to be scarfed in case I got a dragon and stuff I don't know certain things are going through my head right however now is a Galarian Dermana in front of me and I can need to drop everything and start thinking about this and this was a really tough turn for me because uh obviously i didn't really want to stay in here but i've watched enough of wolf's matches to know that 
he really thrives on being able to get cheap U-turns early by forcing switches on the Gal Galarian Manitan. So I knew I was taking a big, big risk by staying in there, but it felt right in the moment, right? It felt like what I had to do here. Uh, and and I got the call right, right? I, I, I stood my ground, I, I kept the U-turn, and I'm able to get, I assume, is what I assume is an air slash off. It does get the attack raise, which helps me out a decent bit. Oh, I got a toxic off, that's interesting. Oh, right. I, I go for Toxic because I hard expect him to want to U-turn because I really wanted to to go with the courage of my convictions and and if I really thought it through right right like if I really believe that that, that he's going to click U-turn I have to act accordingly and I have to Toxic whatever wants to come in instead of just clicking Air Slash and getting like nominal damage that's gonna get recovered off anyway right so now I just try to wear down this Porygon too because in my mind this A like I can get some flinches which hey what up but also, uh, it's kind of important for me to, to kind of get this thing down where I need it to be in order to start really getting some pieces to fall where they need to be, right? So that's where my head's at. I'm feeling okay about how we're progressing here. Things are going okay, but this thing comes back in. But he lets me get a ton of damage off on it. And now, obviously, this thing is in here and it does a lot of potential damage to me. And now I have to hard expect him to want to go for Icicle Crash, right? Like, right? Like this was not a moment where I really felt like I could make another call like that first U-turn call. And he does go for the Icicle Crash, so I call it correctly again. I do go into my max defense frog, which is really the only thing that can stand up to it. However, 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 I ran all the calcs, and, if, and assuming this thing is scarfed, which this thing appears to be by that damage, I'm, I'm, I'm mentally confirming that, that this thing is scarfed in this moment. But I know that I always take two if it's scarfed. Um, I think I think this is designed that even if it's scarfed adamant, I take two. Something to that effect. I don't 100% recall. But point is, from that damage, I'm, I'm, I'm mentally clocking the fact that it, that, that it is scarfed. And that's going to... Or, or at the very least, like, non-boosting adam, right? That's that's where my head's at at the, at the moment. It goes into the ditto, which is fun. He's going to be able to see my set, which is not ideal. Um... And honestly, the Ditto is going to be able to the Ditto is going to be able to really see see what's going on. I think this might have rocks if I remember correctly, so he's going to be able to get rocks on me using my own Pokemon, which which is not ideal. But again, this was another moment where I thought that he's going to want to switch into something. He's he's not going to want to just because he had to take all all that air slash damage. He's not going to want to just just um stay in. Let me take another icicle crash and then and then let me hit it really hard back with something else, right? So, that gives me a little bit of leeway here. Um, but because obviously I know, I know uh, the Seismitoad set, I know that I'm reasonably safe to go into into Togekiss. And also, because I I also only feel this this confident being able to go into uh, the Togekiss because I know if I do get Toxic, which he does go for the Toxic. I know that my mill tank has heal bell on it, so I'll be able to kind of outlast any toxic that he's able to get off on me using my own fucking toxic, which is not ideal. But I know that I'm going to be able to, to kind of counteract whatever toxic he tries to get off on me in the longer run with my mill tank's heal bell, right? And getting and damaging th this heal bell, damage sorry, damaging this ditto is going to be the more important factor for me in the longer run of this game, right? It's going to be what really kind of gets me to where I need to be ultimately but now we're in a position where I feel reasonably confident I honestly this is also a moment where I know I know like in modern draft league dittos have expanded to, to be right to be able to run a lot of different items and, and, be, and be viable but I'm also trying to mentally clock if he outspeeds if he if he like switches out and, and doesn't like like monotoxic or, or whatever the case may be if he if i if it can force the switch it might be scarfed right that's that, i really want to test that as my operating assumption right those are the kinds of things that i'm thinking about in, in this moment it does switch out so it kind of leads towards it being scarfed i'm not entirely sure yet but again that's my operating assumption at the moment but torkoal comes in i feel reasonably confident again because i know it's not going to want to go for body press on this turn specifically so i feel confident being able to go into mill tank eat up a hit and then we can proceed from there wherever we want to go i think ultimately even if i have to give up the mill tank it would be better for me to either um 
maneuver myself for rocks in the later game or or uh just got off a heal ball but he pulls a double switch goes out into this thing now again i am thick fat i don't know anything about this other than now i know that it's solar power in sun right that's obviously scary but i'm i'm actually i, I think i actually take some time here to, to start to run some calcs to see if this is spectacles and that's my biggest fear and even though i am thick fat spectacles does a ton of damage like spectacles overheat does a ton but if it goes for a weather ball i think weather ball like spectacles weather ball i think i take two of those but i'm in the moment here where, where i kind of want to feel him out feel out like what he's trying to do here and i feel like i'm in a position where i can kind of figure try to figure some things out it goes for fire blast which terrified me but it does under half which is huge huge first of all it, it confirms no spectacles which um which is wild but honestly i i am I don't even remember I don't even remember if I found out what item this thing is, right? Which is honestly also kind of scary because like I don't know at this point, right? That was a fire blast in sun with solar power, and it does under half because of thick bat, right? Like that's insane to a mill tank, which isn't even that specially defensive. The, obviously the thing, this thing is max plus defensive, but this thing isn't even naturally specially defensive. And we're taking that like a champ. We're able to 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 get to roost that damage off, essentially. And Stand here in front of this Charizard, right? This mill tank is holding the line in a huge way for, for my team against a Charizard that can honestly kind of tear through me at the moment, right? So we're in here. Mill tank's being a monster. I don't even remember what 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 button I clicked. Maybe I clicked toxic. I don't know. Toxic makes sense just because I can uh just because I can roost off any damage any subsequent damage and go on from there um but this thing is really specially defensive as well so we force another um attack raise i go for seismic toss obviously obviously i say uh I'm, I'm just trying to put some pressure on the team um i don't remember whether or not i i, I thought he would want to kind of switch out or, or whether or not i was kind of expecting him to, to want to switch out but Seeing this this Porygon 2 come in and having it take rocks plus poison plus seismic toss really puts me in an interesting position and it makes me think that I can potentially KO this thing if he does anything but like switch out or or anything right now. Obviously, I I I couldn't quite tell even with my HP bars, but he knew exactly where his HP was, so he knew that he that he could always take it. He's able to recover up. It's going to be a whole thing. But I don't feel the worst about this interaction, right? I'm still wearing this thing down. It's not gonna be able to do this thing this forever. He might, um, he might toxic me, but regardless, I still feel like these are kind of free turns. So this is gonna let, let me get a heal ball off and put my Togekiss in a good position to kind of continue doing what it needs to do. And uh, now that I can reveal to uh, heal bell, this is also what puts me in a good position to take on this Torkoal because again, my Togekiss is really is really well suited to take on this Oracle 1v1 and that's what I go into right now apparently um, there's some other things here I still want to try to get some pressure on I still feel like I'm getting my footing here and kind of putting the pieces in, in, in a place but I was put a couple turns behind because of that Darmanitan pressure because of um, because of getting toxic on on my togekiss and this is all just kind of me stabilizing here but i do feel stable at this point right and i'm and i'm in a position where i can kind of take things slowly and i think now i'm honestly starting to think that i'm in a really solid position because even if this thing does get drawn out even longer and and obviously i want to win as much as possible within time um He's taking so much time. Like I have to wait so much time between turns that that, that now start when I start to check the clock. And you can see I was at like seven and a half minutes. He's he's like just above four. So I have a three minute advantage on him. He's taking so much time that this is where I really start to think. Right, like this could end six six on time, and I could win that way. I don't know. Like 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 my mind is genuinely going through through those possibilities. Um, however, I do have to take a fat overheat. Overheat does a bunch of damage. 
But uh, this thing is weakened now. I can roost it all off, and I'm honestly fine vis-a-vis -vis my Togekiss, right? This combination of Togekiss and Miltank feels really strong for me. I think he expected... I, I think he knew that I was going to go into Togekiss, and he tried to gauge damage, see how much damage I would I would be doing, but I was max special defense, and I was always going to take those hits like a champ. But if I was anything but max special defense, obviously I would have been in a, in a, in a really not ideal situation. But he does know that I'm forced to roost. He does know that uh, he's going to be able to get a kind of free turn here to be able to go into the remaining hand. That's a fantastic switch on his part. But also, you can see he took like half a minute just, just on that turn. And I'm still up. And I'm still in a not ideal position. But but he's 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 definitely getting his pieces in, in, in a place in terms of positioning because because me stabilizing and me like staying healthy by by roosting is definitely giving him turns to kind of maneuver himself a little bit and that's kind of, and that's kind of putting that has the potential to, to put me in a bad spot in, in a really um awkward spot but i felt confident enough that he would never click superpower in this moment so i go into I go into Miltank, he clicks U-turn, which I honestly didn't expect. I honestly expected a an Icicle Crash more. But the biggest thing is that he didn't click he didn't he didn't click superpower, right? Any move other than superpower, and I'm completely fine with this interaction, right? Like I can deal with it. U-turn did a ton of damage. I'm surprised at how much damage that U-turn did, in all honesty. Even now, just watching it back, I'm surprised that wasn't a crit. Uh I I was preparing myself. I was mentally pre preparing myself to say like that was a crit, but it just wasn't. It's just a really strong hit. Right? Anyway, Starmatic is really strong. That U turn's really strong. Goes into. Goes into Ditto. And I still don't know what item this is. I'm. I'm leaning towards. I'm slightly leaning towards. Towards, um. Towards Scarf. But the fact that he brought this in here made me honestly think that it wasn't Scarf. However, I'm. I do kind of have to feel this out. I did kind of ha have an inkling that the reason he wanted to bring this in, and you could just see see on the timer. Oh, that's right, that's right. It was when I was waiting on, on this turn when when I really start started to think to myself, like no matter what happens, I think I've already won because he's because I've been watching the clock a little bit, but seeing how much seeing how much um, time he took on that turn specifically, and seeing that that it brought him down to, to two and a half minutes, I really genuinely already felt like I had already won this game because I thought there was no way that he could beat me like in time regulation, right? I got off a of seismic toss because I feel like if he tries to seismic toss me or toxic me, I can always outlast that because because I can uh, ditto has so much less HP inherently and I can kind of maneuver myself around here. Ends up going for a heal belt, right? He was faster, which is okay. It, it could just be a speed tie. I don't know yet, but he switches out, which again, makes me think scarf but it doesn't confirm scarf and it puts me in an awkward position vis-a-vis -vis, like figuring out what the makeup of this of this team is however the porygon 2 is healed um but i wanted to, to to maintain pressure so i go for the seismic toss and uh i get i get a good amount of damage which is really honestly great because if i if i make another call where i go for an air slash he, he can't switch this thing recklessly in anymore against my togekiss because i would have he would have to take um he would have to take air slash damage that would KO from here. And if he tries to play recklessly with, with, with anything else, then um, then, I'm a, then I'm in a really interesting position. And here I make a, another really bold call. Going into Togekiss again. I, I honestly thought he would he would never go for us to crash in this situation. He's either going to want to click U-turn or superpower. I'm going to try to to play around this. I call that correctly, which even watching this now surprises me. <laughs> Even watching this now surprises the shit out of me. I that that's a really nuts call to make on my part. But now, again, uh, I'm, I'm trying to stabilize. It does, it does let him get the Torkoal in, but the Torkoal at this point is so weak. I think, right? Is this the Torkoal is weak enough? I, okay, so this seems like it might be two hit range. Obviously, I have to test it, but I, but I think I might be a, one good flinch away from being able to, to, to get out of this interaction scot-free and with full HP, which is honestly huge for, for what the makeup of this game is look like. I do a good amount of damage. Gets the Toxic off, misses, so he breaks through the 60% flinch to miss the Toxic, which is unfortunate, but I'm confident that I would have found a turn somewhere to be able to, to, to heal Bell. I don't know if it's the biggest deal in the world, 
I think maybe he was expecting me. I don't know. Maybe. I, I don't know. It, it's tough to say. For for all of our sakes, let's just pretend that that, 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 air, that air slash flinched, right? We can all just move on and, and pretend, right? Anyway. Pick up a KO. I feel really in, in the driver's seat in, in this moment. I think this is the first KO. And he has, like, barely more than a minute left on his timer. Is that right? Um... I did not expect this one to go to, to be completed under timer, but spoiler alert, it might finish in timer. Who knows? We'll see. But again, he's taking a ton of time here as well. Goes into this thing, puts me in a really awkward position. However, 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 at this point, yeah, barely over a minute, like a minute and a half. At this point, I feel so much in it. In the driver's seat. Oh, okay. It, um, I, I forgot about this turn, but I feel like no matter what he wants to go for, right? Like again, the biggest options are superpower, U-turn, or or single crash. Either way, Blacephalon comes in, takes a hit, and is able to kind of um, maneuver accordingly. But uh. I'm able to at least gauge what he wants to do, right? If he if he clicks U-turn, then Blacephalon's in here. It's it's in a position to kind of do some damage. If he clicks Superpower, then obviously Blacephalon's in there. It's in a position to do some damage. If he clicks Icicle like Crash, it gives me the information and it lets me switch accordingly, right? So it lets me pull a double out into my mill tank, and I'm in a position now where I can start to do some things. Um, I think here i would be inclined to go for a seismic toss because obviously he's locking up icicle crash it's it's either going to put pressure on the mod in the back or it's it's going to threaten a ko onto this uh this darmanitan i avoid it i don't think that was the biggest deal in the world but we do get the seismic toss off and melt tank gets its first ko of the game oh um but now we're in a really solid position vis-a-vis his team, now that one of the biggest kind of threats is gone, and now it's going to be a matter of outlasting his team. And again, we're in, we're close to the finish line. He has a minute left on, on the clock. This thing is in. I didn't even really consider this thing as the biggest threat in the world, but now that it's in here, it's a huge threat that I have to deal with. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm honestly really confused. I think, that, I think I just go for this because it's a sack, because this thing is really meant to be able to switch into the to the Darmanitan and now that the, the Darmanitan is gone it doesn't have the biggest role in the world so this felt like my moment to kind of let me uh, start to do some things if I remember correctly does this thing have Ice Wind? I don't know I I will see in a second but I think this might have had Icy Wind oh no it, it didn't I think I took it off regardless um it, go, it does go for the rock polish, which is terrifying, but it's already faster than most of my team just naturally. So it was it's not the biggest deal in the world. It, it just, I guess, doesn't allow my Blacephalon to come in and, and, and attempt to, to revenge, right? So fair play. That's fine. But now I'm out here and um, I go out into the lad. And this was super scary, but um, turns out, turns out. I had accidentally built the perfect cure for the situation. Um, I don't even think I was boots. It, it would have helped to have been boots. That would have been that would have been the only way to make this set more perfecter. But regardless, we're here. I found it after the match. This thing is timid. It goes for a sheer force life orb focus blast, which would have KO'd pretty dang near every Kiram out there in the book. But not this one, not this perfect here that I ha that I have here in front of us. Um, there is a calc out here. Uh, I always took it. It did a max of like 98, 99 percent. I always, always, always took that focus blast. But that was not for this calc specifically. It was for other things. Uh, and the fact that it just happened to work out was fantastic however kiram's in <laughs> ditto's in which means kiram's in which is bad and this especially sucks because i in the past have been beaten by my own kiram 
because of a ditto. And I immediately had flashbacks to that moment, and I immediately thought it was about to happen again. I immediately got terrified that I was going to lose to my own Kiram again because I'm looking at my team, I'm thinking, how do I beat my own Kiram? I don't know what to do against my own Kiram. I think I lose to my own Kiram. I just lose on the spot. Five KOs go to ditto. I suck. Everything I tried to do was for not. But, but, well, okay. Yeah, you can see I'm really stressing out. Like, I'm looking at the team. I'm going, I'm looking at my moveset. I'm really stressing out at the moment. I'm really stressing out at the moment. I'm trying to figure this thing out. And if nothing else made me think it, now I'm really starting to think that, that now I, I'm almost convinced, fully convinced that this thing is scarfed because of the way that this thing came in. Uh, because of the way that this thing came in, and he knew that that it could. This felt like he was like putting a stick on the table and being like, "This is this is how I'm gonna beat you with your own goddamn gear." But I ran some calcs. Turns out my Drapion can beat my own Kiram, so I was happy about that. I was happy about that. If this Kiram is carved, obviously, whatever, whatever, whatever. But, uh, it was also funny because I was running calcs against my own Kiram, and I thought I had to go for Rock Slide at first, but because I adjusted, after I adjusted the HP to match Ditto's HP, it turns out that that knockoff also KOs 100% of the time, which is, which is probably better for me in the longer run because it covers other switches potentially and it helps me kind of maneuver this a little bit better um but even now i'm i'm i i, I think i'm debating I, th I think at this point i'm still kind of trying to plug in D ditto's hp uh and trying to see how to run that calc but uh again turns out drapeon was going to be my answer which uh was crazy to me. It was crazy to me because I really genuinely thought I was going to lose to my own Kiram. Again! Again! I've done this before! I've lost to my own Kiram! I think it kicked me out of playoffs once. I've been beaten by my own Kiram and I was, and I cannot explain to you the the, the the feeling of almost having having it happen again. Anyway. Turns out it goes out in a charge heart. All that is to say goes out in a charge heart. And I wanted to get Miltank in cleanly. There's really nothing left to do here. I decide I'm just going to go out into uh, Kiram to sack it off. He can't copy my Kiram anymore. He, he cannot beat me with my Kiram anymore. If he's gonna beat me, it's gonna be it's gonna be with 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 what Miltank, Togekiss. Togekiss is gonna my own Togekiss is gonna flinch me to death. Is is what's gonna happen, right? All in out. Predictions in chat. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, what do you think he's gonna beat me with? But now that I know, I'm safe with Miltank. Miltank is my Miltank is my warm blanket that I can come into. We can get a we can get a milk drink off. We know how well we take these hits from or, from Charizard. I feel safe. I feel I feel good. I feel taken care of with Miltank. I can get a seismic toss off. He he, he either clicks Roost. I try to get off some pressure, but I I, I honestly. It honestly also wouldn't have surprised me if you wanted to, if you wanted to, um, roost up. So I probably should have, should have clicked Toxic. I, I, I think I realized, like, like after I, after I already clicked Seismic Toss, that Toxic might have been the better play because it covered the, the roost. However, because I clicked Seismic Toss and put the pressure on the team, it meant that, um, it meant that I was able to two hit the, the incoming Porygon, which is also huge, right? But now, Charizard comes back in. And now, now, with that knowledge, with that, like, moment to think about the fact that Toxic was always a better play because it covers the potential Roost. Now I click Toxic. Now he clicks Roost. And now I make the play that I should have, that I probably should have made a couple of plays ago. Even though by me making the wrong play, it was actually better for me. Because it, but I miss anyway, so whatever. It's all mood anyway. However, we all know how well I take these hits. It's no longer solar power, and and even if the Ditto wants to come back in, I don't care if he if, if he um if he copies me. As long as I get a toxic off and I'm able to close out this game. However, 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 even though it seems obvious to me that that there's no way for 
Wolf to kind of beat my team through this Mel Tank to I, I I don't see a way for Wolf's remaining two mons to beat my Mel Tank. It's occurring to me that I that I can't get these KOs under time. Except he makes a switch here. Into the Ditto. And now I'm starting to think, oh, maybe I can get this in in time. But that's also kind of fraught because I'm really trying to... I, I would ideally like to get Miltank these final KOs. And I don't know. Maybe if, if Wolf hadn't have switched around and and I just... And the game had ended with Miltank in front of two mons, I would have given Miltank the KOs anyway. And we would have just let Aquarius find out and, and, and see if and how much I get yelled at when it does come out, right? But... Turns out that, uh, that now he's trying to make some moves. He's trying to he's trying to milk drink, right? But I think this thing is Scarf. I don't know yet. I don't 100% know, right? But he goes for milk drink. And that kind of confused me a little bit because it, it made me really think, like, is this thing Scarf? Like, I, like, I don't I don't know, man. Um, Regardless, he's down to 15 seconds. So I have to just outlast 15 seconds with Mel Tank, which is, you know, not the most typical thing in the world. Let's run Miltrank again, so I think he's Scarf. I'm, 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 I think he's Scarf into Miltrank, into Miltrank, right? So I guess I just click Toxic. I guess I just try to wear this thing down, but it didn't even make sense to me, like as a kind of um, play for Diff, because I think Diff doesn't matter if, if the game ends on on time, right? I just get the Diff anyway. So this really kind of upset me, and I think I kind of like like messaged him, and I was like. Bro, why are you trying to deny Miltank these KOs, right? Like, you could just, like, get Mil let Miltank get these KOs, call it a day, and, and hopefully, I, of course, doesn't get mad at me if I, if I, um, if, if I have to potentially fudge some numbers in order to give Miltank these KOs. But, it's starting to really, like, dawn on me that, like, he, I, I don't think he can physically put in the button inputs quickly enough for Miltank to get these KOs anymore, if he's going to continue to just click Miltank every turn. So I have to do something in this moment, right? Uh, I believe, yeah, I go into Drake down in the moment, right? Uh, but he sw also switches out, which surprised me. I, I really didn't know what to make. I genuinely didn't know what to make at this moment, right? Because it feels like you would rather just stall that time with Miltank. But I also go, in a, go out into Drake down. However, I'm running some calcs. And, uh, and I don't think I'm able to take a straight up, like, Fire Blast. Or, or sorry, I don't think I'm able to take a, a Fire Blast and stay behind a sub to be able to click Rock Slide. I'm, I'm genuinely running these cows because I think Drapion can, can get this game in under regulation. He has, he has 10 seconds left, so, which means he's, he's if, if we're going to do it, he, he has to click his buttons really quickly. But, uh, well, well we, we avoid. But, I think... I think if I remember correctly, Fire Blast was going to do over half, was slated to do over half, which means that I, that I wasn't going to be able to stay behind a sub, which means that um, it would have put me in a bad position vis-a-vis -vis the Ditto. But now Ditto gets to come in and gets to copy the Drapion, which means uh, Drapion now gets to... And Drapion now gets to try and... Uh, take on the rest of my team so he's he's gonna scarf himself into knockoff which is fine because i know that knockoff like never really like is able to is gonna be able to to, to ko this drapion but i realized to myself that if i ko the that if i don't ko this with with um with drapion then miltank gets the ko because miltank got the poison off on this but if i if i call this wrong and and toxic doesn't take it out then, uh, Miltank, then, then nobody gets the KO, right? Like, I denied Drapion the KO, and Miltank d d doesn't get the KO. So, where does that leave me, right? And, and I haven't been do doing the math enough to know if that is, is good for one final round of, of Poison. But, I know he has two seconds left on his clock, so guaranteed this is going to be the final turn of the game. And, and I'm really deciding whether or not to click Rock Slide and try to just end the game outright or click Sub and try to give the KO to Miltank, even though if I call it wrong and, I, and, I, and it doesn't KO, 
then I think that KO goes to no one and it's just a waste of KO. So that's honestly the turn that I probably spent the most time on in this entire game, right? That's not really true, but you guys get it. I end up going for the sub on the off chance that we can KO. And by God, Miltank done did it. Miltank got that third KO. It's a three KO Miltank game. Let's go. Miltank is my KO leader by a decent margin. And if Wolf did not deny Miltank that fourth KO, if he had let Miltank get those final two KOs, it would have been in the top 10 KO leaders. But that's just kind of how it goes. Miltank did his thing. Miltank was my security blanket. It really did what it needed to do. This was a tough matchup. Uh, again, might have not been the most exciting game in the world. Might have not been the most exciting build in the world. But it felt necessary to me. I really needed a win. I really needed some confidence. I really needed um, some momentum. And I really needed to try to get some things happening for a potential playoff push and keep myself in the overall playoff hunt and this matchup just felt awful i really did not want to get 6-0 because i couldn't break a gosh dang slow bro porygon situation so that's where i'm at that's how the game ends thank you guys so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with more weeks of the upba as well as more stuff to come in the near future once again thank you guys so much for watching and everyone's again